guys, about a week ago I did the, a tour of the Lock Lab and I just casually mentioned I'd get around to doing a, uh, a review of my Naughty Bucket, kind of an update. And then uh, I got about a hundred emails saying, I want it now, I want it now. So it took me a week to get to it, but here we go. What I've decided to do, my Naughty Bucket has grown uh, out of proportion with my lab, but anyway, uh, I had to sort things out just a little bit. The first thing I'd like to talk about will be the padlocks. So what I'm going to be showing is all of the padlocks that I have not ever been able to open. And I'm going to, I'm going to break them up into categories. And the first one I'd like to talk about would be disc detainers. So give me just a second and I'll separate all the disc detainers out and show you what I got. Well, fellows, the kind of lock that's given me the most trouble, in fact, I've never been able to pick any quality disc detainer lock. And here you see uh, some that have been in my, my naughty bucket. This one's from Bill Croft's collection, and I got a tip from Ramundo, the inventor of the Bogota pick, and he gave me a couple of tips on what we might be able to try to get this one, but haven't had any luck just yet. Uh, disc detainer locks, if you're not aware of it, they have little discs on the inside, and this is an Abus granite. This is actually the lock that's required if you want to insure something in Europe. It's called the insurance lock. I think it's even on here somewhere. There we go, the insurance lock. No luck with this thing. I even bought a special tool for about almost $300. No luck on this thing. Move those discs around. I can't get any feel off of them. The same with this is a lesser lock. This is only about a $22 lock. I bought this when I was in Germany, but it's the same kind of thing. It's almost identical, and I've had no luck getting into this lock either. I bought a specialized tool uh, for this one as well. Nothing. The last category, and I'm going to say it, these, at least for me, are unpickable. These abloys, they are just uh, the same design discs, except the abloys have added features. They have a lot more discs in them, and they have side pins in them now, and they also have weird looking keyways. They also have taken to tensioning on different discs, so you never really know what you're going to be getting. So I have never even come close to opening. Got the whole family here. Typical, I bought one of every size or traded for it. This is the baby abloy, something like you put on your suitcase, but no one will ever be able to pick this thing. It's just incredibly, incredibly difficult to get inside of them. Anyway, that's it on the disc detainers. No luck on those, so let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, dimple locks that I have no luck with. You know, I judge the difficulty of a lock by how many people have made videos on them, and I have not seen anybody do videos pretty much on any of these. This is a probably one of the largest multi-locks you can get. Uh, it is. It contains a, uh, if I can get this key out, it contains an MT5 Plus core. So we got a whole bunch of pins to deal with. We got this little magic tip on here, the active element, and then there's a laser slider. I've only seen one or two guys pick this lock or that core not it not while it's in this lock because when it's in the lock you have an additional level of security you got this little shutter you got to move out of the way so it makes it a little harder to get up inside of there but the core alone in a vice might be a little bit easier this is another multi-lock this is a baby one and this one also is a um, dimple pin and pin but it is not the mt5 plus this is i believe just the mt5 or it might even be the traditional Again, you've got to deal with, uh, I think that's traditional, I don't see the active element. You've got to deal with this little shutter window to get past it, so that, that's going to add an additional la layer of difficulty. This is one I bought on eBay. This is a very old sergeant lock. And you might think, oh, sergeant, I see those picked all the time. Not this one you haven't. This is just pure evil. I am not sure I'll ever be able to get into this one. I've tried everything. No luck. Another one I've had no luck with is this is given. This is an infamous lock. This has been around the internet for a while, I think. Uh, Jim Elwood sent me this probably a year ago, and I've spent countless hours trying to pick this. This is a Kaba lock pin, uh, dimple pin. Very precise lock made in Switzerland, and everybody refers to this as the Gate 1 Kaba lock. No luck. I haven't even come close, I don't think, to getting into this. No feel, no feedback. No nothing. Another one I've had no trouble or no luck with is a, a lock that I actually made. I bought this Iseo, had a really cheap core in it, and I picked that on camera, and then I installed this in it. If I can get it out, I put this in there, and I have had no luck getting into my own lock. So I'm still working on it. We're going to get it someday. And the last one is a really cheap lock. I bought this dimple lock when I was in Peru. And there you go. It says right there, Peru. Got the country logo on there. Pretty simple looking, but 
it's a pin and pin and I've had no luck getting into this one uh, despite hours and hours of, of trying someday this one is possible I suppose this one maybe not all right this is the last major category and the, these locks I've had really no luck with um, I have opened up uh, medical locks before and this high shear is actually a, it's got a medical core in it and you can peek it at the key so you got some decent pinning on this thing but my problem on this one is that they have a very unique keyway so it's very restrictive and it's up inside of this protective shell so it's it's been accessing getting access to the pins on this that's given me the uh, the pain I've taken the core out and put it in a vise and managed to pick it but I like to be able to pick it in its original container. Can't do it. Haven't been able to do it. Got a couple of... Oh, here's another Medico. Uh, this is a Metro lock. It's only a six pinner. But for some reason, this, this one also defies me. I've got hours and hours trying to pick this thing. No luck. Another category of lock. Recently, I've received a lot of, uh, of these buy locks. Uh, I got a couple from Lucas Morendi. The first one to come through the shop, though, was from Sideshow Mick. And this has probably been two years ago. A very cool looking lock, nice and shiny, so you know you got my attention. And by lock is basically two rows of pin tumblers. Uh, this is the newer one. You can see the little active element there in the base. And this was the first one of these that I had ever seen, but I've had no luck. I've picked by locks, but not while they're inside of the lock body. I got a couple from Lucas Morendi. This lock was actually sent around to a whole bunch of locksmiths locking up a box that contains some cash reward. If you opened up the lock, you got to keep the money. And nobody was able to do it. So Lucas sent it to me, and I broke the, uh, the hinges off the lock, and I stole the money and spent it on liquor and women, and then I wasted the rest. And uh, anyway, this lock, no, no luck whatsoever. And this is even the older one. So you would think if any of them were possible, it would be this, this older one. But nothing, guys, nothing. And then Lucas also sent me recently an Abus, and this is a brand new Abus and a brand new... Uh, uh, lock. You can see this is the new gen, new generation. There's the active element in that one. No luck on it. Nothing. I got a couple of locks here from Germany. Uh, you would think I would be able to open these. I've opened up these models before. Uh, I've opened up this larger one. Adrian Weber sent this to me. And it is a seven pinner. And you wouldn't think it would be that big of a challenge. But every once in a while, the stars align when people make locks. And I think these two are the, the stars were perfect because the everything binds at the same time it's difficult to get feedback both of them have super restrictive keyways so all the bad stuff for us pickers it aligned perfectly in these two locks Adrian also sent me another lock this is another big vector but it is a little bit different in that it has a replaceable core now take a look at that keyway Adrian is really good about picking out paracentric keyways with particularly evil bidding. So there you go. I have not been able to get into this. I've gotten a fault set, but that's as far as I've gotten after hours of playing with it. Got another one here. This looks like a regular American lock, but then when you flip it up there, it's the replaceable core version. And this one is a Primus. So this is the same as the uh, as the Combi. So you have all the pins up top. You got six of them, and then you got sidebars down on the bottom to deal with. No luck on this one. I have a couple of different uh, of these Rucos. This first one, let me do the simple one first. I've got a number of these that, that y'all have sent in. Rucos, if it's the older one with the uh, Christmas tree and they got a little bit of wear, Christmas tree pins, uh, and if you have halfway challenging bidding, it's really, really difficult to pick past your fault set. Once you get the fault set on these things, literally the core locks up. So you have to very fine touch. Those guys in Sweden and Denmark, they have that touch. I don't. Not yet. Maybe never. This is another lock. Only one man has ever opened these uh, on video. And this is a, a Ruko. This is the brand new, well, it was new about a year ago, the D12. And I want you to see this keyway. The pins bottom out right there. So the question is, how do you get underneath all of the pins? And there are six of them. And it's really difficult to read the pinning on these things because you've got double cuts for every one of the pins. You don't know which one to believe. So unless you have a bionic eye with magnifi magnification and high resolution, you never figure that out. The Caveman 1966, as far as I know, is the only guy to ever pick this lock. And it was this specific one. And I've tried for hours and hours trying to duplicate that. No luck, guys. Nothing. I got nothing. 
And the last lock is not a pin tumbler, but there's only one that falls into this category, so I don't want to make a separate recording. This is a, a lock sent to me by um, uh, Wan Chai 197. I've had this about a year. I've had no luck with it, and it's kind of an odd lock. It has a sidebar, so it looks very much, let me see if I can grab one here, it looks very much like a car lock. This is a General Motors, if I can get this key out. So the way you know you have a sidebar is if your keyhole is off-center, like this one. So this tells me that this lock has a sidebar in it, and therefore it's probably pretty difficult to pick. And in fact, this one is. This one also is off-center. It also has a sidebar, perhaps two. I haven't been able to get it open. And to make things even worse, it's got those evil laser cuts on both sides. You see we got different cuts, so you got to pick both sides, and it's got a shutter on the bottom, which is going to make things just that much that much easier for us. Anyway, there you go, fellows. There's my naughty bucket padlocks. I got, as you can see, I have a lot of work there for me. I got a big part of my life invested trying to pick all of those with no luck, but doesn't mean I'm going to give up. I'm not trading them. I'm not giving them away until I get them open. All right, fellas. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.